In today's tutorial, I'm going to use Inkscape to show you how to create a vector bike chain going around an object using a technique in Inkscape called Pattern Along Path. And it's a rather useful technique because you can use this technique to create not just a bike chain, but anything, whether it be a regular chain or a rope, or you can even create uh, a floral border going around any shaped object you'd like. So uh, with that being said, let's close out of this and get started. First thing we'll do is we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen from that dropdown. Then we'll open up our Edit uh, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. And make sure you have Custom selected from the View menu. View, Custom, Zoom, and make sure you're zoomed in at 1 to 1 at 100%. So the first thing we're going to do is create a circle. So let's click on the Create Circles and Ellipses tool. And let's hold Control and Shift on the keyboard to create a perfectly round circle, kind of like that. And now let's come over to the opacity slider and let's bring the opacity of that down in half. And then I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate. I'm going to turn that red and hold control and shift on the keyboard and scale this thing up to about here. You want this to be about that much bigger. Now let's take that and lower that one step with this button right here. Lower selection one step. Put that below the black circle. And let's click and drag over both of these. And right click, and go to duplicate hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this off to the right about about this far away I'd say maybe yeah that's that's good right there and the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna create a rectangle so click on the create rectangles and squares tool and let's create a rectangle between these two that's not quite as as high as the two circles but almost you want it to be um say about this much right here this is a good this is good right here and then let's click on this red circle and then hold shift and click on this other red circle and let's unify them by going to path union and then we can click on this red rectangle and hold shift in the keyboard and click on these two red circles and we can center that up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and then we can go to path union now the next thing we want to do is give this a little bit of a dip down here. So let's go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. Let's click on that. And let's grab this line between, this, this straight line between these two circles right here. And let's just click and drag this down a little bit until it becomes fluid with, um, with these two nodes right here. Let me zoom in a little bit and show you. You want this to be fluid and smooth. You don't want this thing sticking up too much, kind of like that. You don't want it looking like that. So. Once you get it about that, you want it to look smooth, just like that. So once you get there, that's pretty good. Come and do the same thing to this one down here. Click and drag that line up. And I'm actually going to click on this node individually, just to you know make sure that this is fluid. And then we can go back to our arrow and click on that. We can press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out. And the next thing we'll do is let's click and drag over this whole thing, and let's right-click it and go to Duplicate. And let's bring this off to the side over here. And let's hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and scale this thing down about this much. Maybe, um, yeah, about that size, I'd say, is good. Now let's click on this black circle and then hold Shift and click on that black circle. And let's go to Path, Union to unify those two. And then we can click and drag over the whole thing and go to Path, Difference. Um, maybe make this a little smaller. I want this to be about this big. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to right click this and go to copy. Make sure you have that copied and make sure this is raised to the top. This should already be raised to the top, but just to be sure, I'm going to click this button right here, raised to the top. Because what we're going to do next, it's important that the object that we're cloning is raised to the, to the very top. So after that, let's click on this uh, big red shape over here. And let's go to Path, and let's go to uh, Path Effect Editor. And fr then from this drop-down, let's select Pattern Along Path right there. And click Add. So from this drop-down over here where it says Pattern Copies, we're going to select Repeated Stretch. And click on that. And then we're going to click this button right here that says Link to Path. And it's going to take the copied object and place it ar around the edges of this object in copies. I'll show you right now. I'm going to click Link to Path, and there you have it, just like that. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is, this kind of looks like a chain, but a bike chain usually has a connector between these pieces. So I'm going to use, I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate. And I'm going to remove the pattern along path from this copy. And I'm just going to turn that green just so I could differentiate it from that one. And then I'm going to close out of the pattern to path, that pattern effect editor menu, because I don't need that anymore. Then we can go to stroke paint and click on the blue button to turn that on. Then we can go to the fill, click on the X to turn that off. And on the stroke style, let's try giving this maybe a seven point stroke, maybe a little more. We'll go to 10. A 10 point stroke. That should work. And then we'll go to path, stroke to path, and then lower that to the bottom with this button right here. Now let's click on these red chain links right here. Then let's go to path and object to path. Otherwise, Inkscape is not going to recognize this as a path yet. It's still going to think that this is a, uh, a cloned copy that we created from this. So if we go and edit this thing right here, it'll edit all of these links in this chain accordingly. So we want to, we want to avoid that. So we're just going to, we're going to go to path object to path to make sure that this is now recognized as a vector object by Inkscape. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this, this chain. I'm going to go to duplicate and then I'm going to go to path, break apart, and then path union. And let's just turn that blue so we can see it and differentiate it. Now let's grab our magnifying glass and let's just zoom in over this left side right here. And then we can go back to our arrow and we're going to try to click that, um, that black border in the background. We're not going to be able to click it because of this, these layers on top. So you could hold alt on the keyboard and that'll allow you to select layers beneath it. And once you see that black stripe show up in the bottom left, you'll know you have it selected. And then we can hold shift in the keyboard and click on this blue copy we just created and go to path difference. And then we can press one on the keyboard to zoom out. We can click and drag over this whole thing. We could bring the opacity up. We can make it a single color. Oops. Just like that. And as you can see, we're pretty much done. We've created um, a bike chain with the, uh, with the um, pattern along path feature in Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know and I'll help you out. And thanks for watching.